Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at part two of the price ceiling practice problem that we were working on before, specifically how to calculate consumer and producer surplus when a price ceiling is implemented and there's deadweight loss. With that said, let's get into it. So first, let's recap what we did in part one. This will make a lot more sense if you watch that video first. So if you haven't, we've linked in the description. Please check it out first. This will just make a lot more sense as a follow up video. So demand and supply in the market for bus fare in a city are given by the equations quantity demanded is equal to 2400 minus 500 P and quantity supplied is equal to 300 P. And we were able to calculate in that other video the equilibrium of $3 for price and 900 bus tickets for quantity. We then calculated this yellow triangle right here as deadweight loss. And now in this video, we'll be looking at the consumer and the producer surplus. Now, two important values that we did not calculate in part one that we need to calculate for part two are this intercept and this intercept right here specifically where the demand intersects the p-axis or the y-axis and where the supply curve intersects the p or the y-axis. Once I've found these two values, I can then calculate my consumer and producer surplus, which is denoted by the green and the pink space. So to find these intercepts, we'll start with the supply curve. I want to know when the supply will intersect the p-axis. And I know that anywhere on that y-axis, the x value, or in this case, the q value must equal zero. So I will take my equation, QS equals 300P, and I will sub in zero for my Q value because anywhere on the Y axis, the X value must be zero. So in this case, anywhere on the P axis, the Q value must be equal to zero. So subbing in zero for Q, I get zero equals 300P. Rearranging the 300 to the other side, I just get zero divided by 300 equals P, and therefore price is equal to zero dollars. Now let's do the same thing, but for the demand curve. So QD is equal to 2,400 minus 500P. I'm going to substitute in zero for Q and solve for P. So now I have zero is equal to 2,400 minus 500 P. Rearranging, I get 500 P is equal to 2,400. And then finally dividing both sides by 500, I get P is equal to 2,400 divided by 500. And the final step will yield P is equal to $4.80. So now I can take these values, $0 and $4.80 and substitute them in onto my graph. Recall that producer surplus is the area below the selling price and above the supply curve. So here that's denoted by the pink triangle. Well, it's a triangle, so producer surplus is simply equal to base times height divided by two of this triangle. Well, the base of the triangle is right here. It's $2.50, which is just the difference between $2.50 and $0. And the height of the triangle is right here. It's $7.50, the difference between zero and $750. So upon subbing those in, I get producer surplus is equal to 2.5 times 750 divided by two. And finally, producer surplus is equal to $937.50. But that's the easy one because it was simply finding the area of a triangle. What about the consumer surplus? Because as you can see, this is a compound shape. That is, it's two normal shapes put together, a triangle and a rectangle. So for consumer surplus, I need to calculate the area of both. That is the base times height divided by two for the triangle and the length times width for the rectangle and then add those areas together. So for my triangle, the base is right here and the height is right here and the length of the rectangle is here and the width of the rectangle is here. Subbing in all of these values, I get something that looks like this. Consumer surplus is equal to 750 which is the base of the triangle times 1.5, which is the height of the triangle, also known as the difference between $4.80 and $3.30, divided by two, plus the area of the rectangle, which is 750 times 0 0.8. And 0 0.8 is the difference between $3.30 and $2.50. Simplifying this further, I get consumer surplus is equal to $562.50 plus 600, which yields me a final value of consumer surplus equaling $1,162.50. So if I want to consolidate all of my known values, producer surplus is equal to $937.50. 
Consumer surplus is equal to $1,162.50. And from part one, you will remember that deadweight loss is equal to $60. And that's the total loss in producer and consumer surplus because we are not in equilibrium because of this price ceiling. If you want a part three to this video, which shows you how to calculate the magnitude of the loss in producer surplus and the loss or gain in consumer surplus, then let us know and we can definitely put together a part three looking at the change in producer surplus and consumer surplus because of that $60 deadweight loss. We hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and of course, let us know in the comments section what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next.